is Friday, meaning it should be 10 a day, but unfortunately, due to the Olympics, we got a hiatus and we got like a, a recap through Luminous Perspective. But hey, and News gave us a new video called The Most Powerful Beings in, Dra in Tensor Explain True Dragons, Dragon Lords, and Their Evolution. Let's get it. Dragons are by far the most powerful type of existence in Tensora. As Feldora once said himself, his lifespan is- Did you guys notice that every time Annie New starts a video, he goes crazy with the caption subtitles? Do you know why that is? Because the first couple seconds is integral in making an impression to your audience. And if the kids see his big captions, they get more engaged with it. But then the captions obviously fall off afterwards because he's done this purpose. Infinite and flesh unfathomable. As long as his will remains intact, he shall, in fact, live forever. Feldora's one of four very unique cases, though, since the Draconic species isn't just true dragons. Even God They're me. actually a subclass of monsters created from the broken down elements of Veldanova. The Star King Dragon, who's not only the strongest true dragon to ever exist, Veldanova. But again, the name Veld, you know, the Veldora, the, the fucking dragon family name. Star King Dragon. This is Milim flashback. I thought that Milim's friend dragon was a clone of the father dragon because Milim's dad wanted her to not be lonely, which in turn turned into the chaos dragon at the end when shit went wrong, but okay. But is also Veldora's brother and Milim's father. Got He's it. without a doubt the strongest character in the entire Tensora universe. Really? Okay. More than anything, thank you, Noscan, for the tier one, man. I appreciate that. But in the Tensor universe, this is the strongest being, the Star King Dragon, Milim's dad. The doubt, the strongest character in the entire Tensora universe. The first created a child on land with a human. How the fuck did this girl? You know the meme of white women not beating allegations whenever they're around dogs or horses. What the fuck is this, bro? With the goddamn dragon? So, whereas true dragons are these near omnipotent spiritual life forms, everything below, like arch dragons, lesser dragons, dragonoids, and even dragonuts, all stem from Veldanava. Got it. Specifically, the pet turned chaos dragon he gave to Milam. Yes, that's this the This is what I want to talk about in this video, since dragons here are so much more than just your regular fantasy dragons. There's a vast layer of lore yet to be explored with them. So, as I cover the spoiler free details behind their existence, I hope you'll appreciate learning more about yet another amazing facet of Tensora. But first, before we begin... Very quickly before I get started though. Very quickly before I get started though. Okay, another ad intro I'll memorize. If you want to support the channel beyond just liking the video... Buy the merch! Mugen merch! 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 Buy t-shirt! Buy t-shirt! Buy! Let's go. But anyway... The main difference between regular dragons and Veldora's kind is essentially the type of presence they have in the world. Regular dragons are more these material life forms bearing a physical presence, while true dragons are spiritual and can exist in any form. Right. So that dragon example that we defeated for Mjolnir, that he like, Rimuru basically is like, his god to him, was just like a lizard. Looks like a dragon. But it's not really a dragon. It physically it looks like a dragon, but it is not the same because These spirit? material life forms bearing a physical presence, while true dragons are spiritual and can exist in any form. Spiritual. What this means is that, as beings who exist as pure will and energy, all they need to live is their soul. It's an inherent trait that makes them effectively immortal. That's okay. not to say they can't be killed. The soul of a dragon is pretty much immortal and it can be implanted into any type of vessel. The dragon form is simply just a visual. You see that with the soul corridor bullshit, right? Veldora has been implanted a soul into a clone, right? And that's basically Veldora right here, but I don't think this is even like the extent of his true powers, right? I doubt this clone can even like utilize all of Veldora's potential. That's what I'm assuming. Same thing with like Diablo whenever he got summoned into like a vessel. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I'm just assuming that like in order for power scaling, they're like reserving people's strength while making them seem OP, but it's like, no, they're still nerfed. As pure will and energy, all they need to live is their soul. It's an inherent trait that makes them effectively immortal. 
That's not to say they can't be killed, but attacks on the soul are so far and few between that you'd have a much better chance dealing with them by sealing them away with something like mm. Infinity Prison. Then, even if you did somehow destroy their soul, a true dragon can just revive again whenever. Really? You can just revive the soul? So it's already hard to do spiritual damage. I think this integrate is one of the common things that we've seen. But they can revive. The, the luminaries though, remember the luminaries? Those geezers? Those dudes uh, were also... Got their souls destroyed by Hinata's number one simp. Uh, the Roto family guy had, he escaped because his soul was... It, it, it was the final luminary, right? And he got away because he wasn't even in contact. Albeit potentially at the cost of who they are now, but a true dragon nonetheless once again representing the same concept they did before. Storm, frost, scorch, star. Storm, wind, ice, fire. Star though. Star, universe, planets, space. Interesting. These are the four true dragons known to exist in the world, one of which is no longer present. Dad? As I said. But could dad not revive it just hasn't revived yet the soul is gone at the moment and it's in some sort of limbo and it could come back or present as i said in the beginning valdanava who's veldora's older brother and milam's father yeah. perished in an act unknown to rimuru and hasn't shown any sign of revival ever since that's right hasn't revived yet. It's just lying dormant. It was a situation Rimuru assumed was pretty serious since, considering true dragons had eternal life, not just anything would be able to remove him from the cycle of reincarnation like that. So something is actively preventing him from being resurrected? So it's not by his choice. Something is literally preventing his soul, this true dragon, to be revived. This was an event we know from Season 2 relates to Milam, but yeah. to give more context on Veldanava's involvement in all of it, he essentially had a casual relationship with a human and- Casual relationship, my ass, bro. This, this human was just taking that dragon dick. That resulted in the birth of Milam. It was an unheard- Milam's mom has gotta be the freakest people in the universe, bro. Yeah, I know that the dragon's soul probably turned into a fucking humanoid form when they- like that, but it's funny for me to think that it was in a dragon form. ...of act that came with a very steep price associated. Milam's existence drained Veldanava of most his power, and that in turn deemed his actions taboo. Drained his powers? Did his, like, dragon magicules be trans- like, transferred to Milam? The way it caused him to lose pretty much everything became heavily criticized and eventually prohibited. So by who though? Dragon society? Like who are who who is strong enough to criticize the strongest being in the universe? It was before Veldanava lost all his power that he would first disperse his body, then come to the surface to attain a physical form. He would then create the pet dragon for Milum, which, yeah. as we know, was supposed to serve as the body for his next reincarnation. It was a young elemental dragon whom Milum cared for deeply that would inevitably be killed by the foolish actions of an elven kingdom. The Elven Kingdom did this. Holy shit. I don't remember that detail back in Season 2, but this was the tale that Eren told us, right? And Eren is from the Elven Kingdom. That is the same place, right? The Tal Talion place. And then what was it? It's like, uh, in order for resurrections to happen, the true seed, harvest ceremony, souls and shit, and, and, and all of that created an environment for, you know, Shion and Gobuzo and the rest to be resurrected. In this case, though, this dragon got resurrected, but in a fucked up way, into a chaos dragon something, right? Milam would then wipe out the several hundred thousand people within that kingdom, yeah. evolve into the rank of a demon lord herself, yeah. then harvest. through that evolution, evolve the elemental dragon beside her. Because the dragon's soul was already damaged beyond the point of repair though, it was upon its resurrection that it became a chaos dragon. Yep, that's the fucked up thing that happened. The elven kingdom had enough power to damage the soul of a... Well, the star king dragon is the true dragon, but this pet's dragon that, that Milam had, does it still count as a true dragon? It should, shouldn't it? Because it's the resurrection. It's like the soul was put into that body. Does it not count? Why would a true dragon's soul 
being reincarnated into a different vessel suddenly not count as a true dragon? That doesn't seem very consistent in logic, unless it was not simply putting a true soul of Star King Dragon into a body. It wasn't reincarnated? And he's telling me this shit was reincarnated. That's what I'm fucking hearing right now. Next reincarnation, he said. Would inevitably be killed by the foolish actions of an elven kingdom as the body for his next reincarnation. Yeah, right here. As we know, was supposed to serve as the body for his next reincarnation. I'm just watching the video and using the logic that I'm hearing and trying to theorize what's going on. Whether or not that's true or not, who the fuck knows? ...of an elven kingdom. Milam would then wipe out the several hundred thousand people within that kingdom, evolve into the rank of a demon lord herself, then through that evolution, evolve the elemental dragon beside her. Because the dragon's soul was already damaged beyond the point of repair though, it was upon its resurrection that it became a chaos dragon. What kind of armies and forces does the Elven Kingdom have to damage this dragon's soul beyond repair? Sounds like the elves are pretty OP to be able to do such a thing. I, mean, I want to know more about elf lore, because right now we're just thirsting over the fucking queen and laughing at how stupid Eren's dad is. But beyond that, like, what is their actual fucking history and their powers? A savage entity which now only brought death and destruction. The rest of that story isn't important because it was upon this dragon's transformation that something special happened. Oh? The essence of its body spread far and wide and from it the factor defining dragons was born. Dragon factor. The essence spread far and wide. Don't know what an essence is, but dragon factor. Okay. What this means is that Every dragon, whether from the past, present, or future, all stem from the essence of this elemental dragon turned chaos dragon. Got it. So basically, just like in Beyblade, like how all right rotating Beyblades stem from Pegasus, <laughs> this, uh, this is Pegasus right here. This dragon is the OG, and every descendant, every other actual dragon is a descendant off of this parent's dragon from the essence of this elemental dragon turned chaos dragon. Got it? It's an undeniable fact that makes Feldenava the father to all dragons. Since the base elemental dragon was the product of him, he's essentially the origin to the draconic he's species a template. as a whole. So whatever distinct characteristics Feldenava used to distinguish that elemental dragon, they now serve as the fundamental DNA behind every dragon. Got it. Now. It's this essence which has a direct correlation to the power a dragon is born with since the stronger the presence of their dragon factor, the closer they are in lineage to Veldanava. Got it. Dragon factor. Think of it like the origin, like the origin dragon DNA, right? Of the Star King. And the more dragon factor you have, the more you're like Veldanava, the stronger you are. More, it's just more dragon factor, more strong. That simple. It means they've inherited more of the essence of that original elemental dragon and okay. as such, more of its power. The strength of the dragon factor is actually what defines the type of dragon they're born as. So for dragon- So like the top four true dragons are simply the closest to the dragon factor of the origin compared to everyone else who's not a true dragon. It's with minimal essence and not a lot of magicules, you'd probably have something like the lesser dragon. Okay. For dragons with a strong dragon factor and- This is not an actual dragon though, was it? I thought this is a, a being that just looks like a fucking flying lizard that doesn't actually have the dragon factor. Lots of magic kills. That's where you get into arch dragon territory. Okay, is so that an actual arch dragon? Because like in the beginning when Aeneas was giving this example, he was saying like, you know, how this form of a dragon is simply not it. But technically, he did go on and if you see the Hubbard section here, if you see the Hubbard section, uh, it's too far away here. If you look at the Hubbard section, boom, it says it does say Arch Dragon for this specific one that Remuda fought to save Milmire. So that's my misunderstanding. But okay, this is still a dragon. This is not a flying lizard. So really, it just comes down to those two things. Okay. Of course, evolution upward was always possible too. So given enough magic kills and enough bits from the elemental dragon, it wasn't impossible to just straight up create an Arch Dragon. Sorry, <laughs> this face of Ranga will never not be funny to me. This one, Dial was about to get summoned. Remuru is too tired. Basically looking like a sleeping max on Ranga. Ranga just smiling and so happy. I don't know, this face is just always so funny to me. 
Like, what? Like, like, it just looks like a dog is about to summon. Like, think about the, like, just what this looks like, right? A fucking random dog is literally summoning demons right now. That's what it looks like. And he's so happy about it. He's about to summon a fucking primordial. He's so fucking happy about it. Like, with the lingering remnants of essence still existing today, lesser dragons were being born constantly. If there was then a denser environment for magicules and a stronger dragon factor, an arch dragon could be born no problem. Okay. It was the highest level a dragon could be born at, one sometimes associated with a specific element. So you can be born as an arch dragon, and that is the ceiling. You can't just be born as a true dragon, even if you have all the fucking dragon factors and DNA that closely matches dad. This was because they were so closely related to the original elemental dragon that there was a good chance they inherit its affinity to earth, water, wind, or fire. Got it. Elemental. So it's not a specific element, right? It's not a storm dragon. It's not an ice dragon. It is just the fucking avatar. That dragon had every element and all the descendants can get a specific element. I, w I don't think we've seen a dragon have more than one element so far, right? Now, you could argue that Storm Dragon, he has the power of wind and lightning and blah, blah, blah. But I'm thinking, like, have we seen a dragon that has, like, fire and ice or some shit? Not yet, right? These were the four types existing at the top, and it's here you'd find entities like the Sky Dragon Rimuru fought against. Got it. Keep in mind, this isn't truly a wind dragon, though, but rather a rarer case one step in the evolution tree right before it. Somehow, this specific dragon just missed the mark on evolving into one. <sighs> so close. So close yet so far. Wah, wah. It's when they do finally reach that pinnacle of evolution, though, that that's when they reach the elite category of Dragon Lord. Dragon Lord. Here you'll only find Earth, Frost, Fire, and Wind dragons, each of which possess elemental powers akin to the element they're affiliated with. And these are what we're going to be bringing into our labyrinth as dungeon bosses? Dragon Lords? Millen's going to round them up? All were once arch dragons before, but after centuries of living and keeping. Yeah, I mean, look at the flower boss. Well, I think this is when they were still thinking about it, but Milim said that she's gonna go round up the dragons. Strength. Somewhere along the way, they'd managed to tap into more power of the original elemental dragon. This in turn extended their lifespan, brought them closer to being spiritual life forms, and granted them knowledge equal to a human. Cool. They were a new level of dragon, up to her even stronger than a demon lord. Likely about as strong as Clayman or a high level spirit of some sort. <laughs> Clayman being used as a unit of measurement again. Their power was actually so far up there that when Rimuru suggested taming some for his dungeon, Milam herself said that even she wouldn't be able to do it. Man, we should have really utilized Clayman to be like a floor boss in our labyrinth man if only right if only we didn't completely obliterate him then we could like resurrect him back and be like all right clean man you gonna be a fucking floor boss in the labyrinth now arch dragons were one thing but oh, sorry tactical difficulties one second three two wait 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 god damn fucking airpods bro and we're good even she wouldn't be able to do it Arch dragons were one thing, but a fully evolved dragon lord was a whole different beast entirely. It would be like trying to force a random person to do a job for you. Sure, Milam could probably capture them easy, but convincing them to cooperate was a different story. How they were, them? after all, fully intelligent like the rest of them. This was why it was easier to just get arch dragons with elemental attributes, since at this stage they were still unintelligent monsters. Their power. So when they get to Dragon Lord, that's when the intelligence shows up. Until then, they don't talk. They seemingly are not smart. It was still high enough up there that they could change the very landscape around them, but they weren't so powerful that they could contest to their newfound sli- I mean, I mean, I mean dungeon life. <laughs> He's not wrong. Besides, dragons instinctually created nests for themselves. Should one randomly find itself relocated, then it would just make a new nest and set up shop in the dungeon. So long as the magicules were potent, then the dragon should have no issue with that. As for how strong these elemental arch dragons were, they were about the same level as the sky dragon or special A rank in terms of classification. They weren't quite as strong as Charybdis, but they could definitely get there given enough time. Okay. Now, unlike how elemental spirits had natural advantages- I wonder what's stronger, an arc demon or a arc dragon? 
I mean, any of you just placed demon, uh, just like a regular demon lord, not a true demon lord, a regular demon lord lower than, you know, a, a dragon lord, right? They were comparable. I think the dragon lord was a little bit higher, maybe, but I'm going to go with dragons over demons. I don't know. Arc demons, arc dragons. Depends on the age of the demon. They live for a long time. They get experience, but so do dragons, don't they? Arc demons do have intelligence. They can speak, but an arc dragon, yeah, they should be intelligent enough to beat a dragon, right? I don't know. If you compare two beings of similar power level, but one has intelligence and the other doesn't, I do want to give it to the demons now. Just depending on their element, the power of these arch dragons was dictated by battle experience. It didn't matter what element they were tied to because agent experience had more impact than elemental affinity. It basically meant older dragons were stronger than younger ones. But anyway, that- I mean, that's the same shit with demons as we talked about, right? The older you are, the stronger you are, more experience you have. Basically meant older dragons were stronger than younger ones. But anyway, that's arch dragons and dragon lords for you. and- Hold up. So this is Veldora's sister, right? So right now we have true dragon lord, uh, sorry, we have two- we have storm dragon, Veldora. We know their dad is the Star King Dragon. There is the Ice Dragon. I think that's what she is, right? He's a true dragon that's Veldra's brother. That's three. And, but there's a fourth one, right? There's four true dragons. And we haven't gotten the fourth one introduced. They're hiding that one so far, right? I'm going to assume that it's going to be somehow Veldra related. So if we have dad... I mean, Milan's mom's not going to be a dragon, right? Veldra's mom... It's not Veldra's mom, but because Star King Dragon is considered Veldra's dad, and is considered Milim's, and, and Veldra's considered the uncle, but Milim's, Milim's mom is, um, is doesn't, so that doesn't count. So there's a missing sibling here. There's somewhere in the family tree, something is missing. We got dad, we got Veldra, we got Velzard. Another girl or a guy? I don't know, but they're hiding that shit. They are hiding that shit. Bigger ones. But anyway, that's arch dragons and dragon lords for ya. And they're a subspecies of dragon kind I'm sure we'll see later on in the anime. If not in the overworld, then definitely in floors 96 to 99 of Rimuru's dungeon. Like, who the fuck is gonna get that far in the dungeon other than maybe Masayuki? I don't know. Genuinely, I. <laughs> Uh, what, Luminous gonna fucking attempt a dungeon? I don't think people of that caliber will. I think it's random adventurers. And like, there's no shot Eren and the fucking triple idiot gang is gonna be able to get that far, right? Now, lesser dragons weren't even anywhere close to the original as there was nothing inherently magical hey, Overlord. about them. They did have strong scales and a tough body, but that was about as far as their dragon factor took them. This brings us now to Dragonoids and Dragonuts, which are both a visual mix between humans and dragons. Yep. Dragonuts are far more common and a lot less powerful, while Dragonoids are simply just Milum. Gotta be fucking racist, bro. Some people transform into husbandos and waifus, but Gabiru got left in lizard form and now he's getting discriminated upon because all the girls don't want a lizard, they want a humanoid. This shit gotta be fucking specious, bro. That's right. She's the only person in Tensura who falls into this category. Reason being that the comparison I made there was Gabiru's sister, but Milim is the only unique dragonoid. And, and a lot less powerful, while dragonoids are simply just Milim. Got it? That's right. She's the only person in Tensura who falls into this category. Reason being that as the only dragonborn of human and true dragon descent, her- Gabiru could try something. Gabiru, Gabiru dragon newt, go fuck a human girl and- Dragon Newtonoid? How does that work? I don't know. Her existence is more of an irregular one. She's not quite a true dragon like Veldora or Veldanava, but her direct relation to him makes her almost as powerful. Yeah. Definitely not as powerful as her dad, but when it comes to Veldora and the other true dragons, she'd certainly be able to put up quite a fight. Battle form! Now, Dragon Newts, on the other hand, were just demi-humans with dragon's blood, so aside from their wings, horns, and scales, you wouldn't see much else in common with their ancestors. They're a race of beast folk that are either born naturally or evolve over time from being lizardmen. 
The dragon faithful are just dragon newts as well, but Humans they're descended first. from dragons who choose to bear a more human form. Yeah. This in turn led to their interbreeding with other humans and as a result gave birth to dragon newts indistinguishable from humans. But yeah, that's the extent of what we should know about dragons so far. I found reading up on them was actually quite interesting, so this is pretty I figured- cool. no, no, for sure, that the demon lore is very interesting too, and dragon stuff also, because like it's hardly ever been- you know, talked about, but it it has been, you know, sprinkled here and there of the, you know, the lore and, like, the existence of true dragons. So, basically, what have we learned, right? There's four true dragons, but obviously the fourth one's being hidden. Uh, we know of, from Season 2, the lore of Milim's backstory and what happened. The Chaos Dragon right now. I'm still waiting on some sort of resurrection when, you know, the Star King comes back. But something is preventing it. Right? They said a soul is pretty much immortal, but right now the rev revival is, for whatever reason, stuck. And, and he's kind of just alluded to that and just moved on. So I'm going to assume that's some you know, spoiler endgame shit. Maybe Dad will come back just in time for the fucking Tenma War or something. And then um, there is the Elf Kingdom. I didn't realize how much the Elf Kingdom had an impact on the dragon lore. I, I completely forgot that it was them that fucked up everything from Milim's side. And that's why that was such a bad backstory. And then... Uh, there's Dragon Factor, right? Everything kind of like originates from the dad. The more closer of the essence Dragon Factor you have, the stronger you are. The older dragons you are, the stronger you are. You can be born as like an Arc Dragon. That's the highest tier. You can evolve later into a D Dragon Lord, which is then like an intelligent form of that dragon. And that missing sibling, man. We are just, just waiting for that missing sibling. Some of you would want to know all about this too. There was so much behind what they are and what they're capable of. This should have been a fucking 20 minute video, but it's low, low key I do enjoy because I yap too much and this is already going to turn into a fucking almost 30 minute video. Very concise, nicely summarized video for many news. That I feel even now this brief overview just barely scratches the surface. Then farm again. Bro, straight up make another video, but say in depth and basically say the same thing you did now, but with more examples and you literally double dip. Trust me, just farm king, bro. Especially when it comes to a being like Beldenava. I hope you enjoyed learning more about them, and if you did, then feel free to leave a like and a comment. Of course, please go to Andy News's video. Here's the link, guys. Go give him a like, sub to his channel if you haven't. And this will fill as the filler, you know, 10 story content of the week. I know that the hiatus sucks, but hey, it is what it is, and I'll see y'all next Friday or something for more 10 story content.